Hey, it's Steve here, and today I'm joined by Jane Ahern, sports nutritionist, and we're going to be talking about um, fueling for sports events and how to be, I guess, like have backup plans and how to be maybe a little bit flexible with some of the guidelines that are out there as well. Absolutely. Um, so there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of time and effort put into creating research around what do we do pre, during, and after events. Mm -hmm. Likewise with training as well at the same time. Um, do you want to just jump in and, and just kind of give me an idea of maybe some of the strategies involved in, as an example, endurance training, um, and then we'll go off uh, go off from there. Okay. Um, well, if sort of training for an endurance event. Um, um, obviously they're you know long duration um, and sort of carbohydrate in terms of macronutrients seems to be key for what you need that doesn't mean you neglect your, your protein and your essential fats and everything else um, but there are certain strategies for example sort of periodization of, of uh, training so um, training when you have quite a lot of carbohydrate and um, sort of you um, your glycogen stores are full um, and also taking um, a carbohydrate supplement like a sports ring, for example, or the gels um, during uh, training, so during you know the run, and to sort of use those to keep you going rather than what you've um, already had. Um, and then replenishing afterwards again, making sure you've got high, high carbohydrate meals afterwards. Um, there's also uh, a lot of in terms of backup plans whilst training there's also days where you could say go having you know the night before not eating many carbohydrates and not fueling with carbohydrates during that or during kind of a longer duration um to just make sure that physiologically your body's able to adapt um this might happen in an event you can plan and plan and plan but if for some reason you have to continue on without your sort of readily available fuel source, your body knows what, what's happening and it's able to kind of quickly, um, you know, make those adaptations, find another fuel source and keep you going until you can then refuel the way, you know, you're used to. So um, th this is the idea of kind of metabolic flexibility in the sense that yeah. really, and we chose endurance athletes because it's probably for a lot of other kind of sports and events, which are much shorter in duration, you probably don't have to think so much about what no, you do really. in, during the event. You can yeah. kind of make sure you feel right beforehand and you can make sure you're feeling right afterwards and everything's generally okay. Exactly. Um, but with endurance events, you've got other periods, I guess, of high intensity, which is going to use up a lot more of your glycogen or your stored up carbohydrate. Yeah. And also just the simple duration of that event will eventually just deplete through your glycogen reserves as well at exactly. the same time. So um, in terms of when your glycogen reserves deplete, what happens to the body at that point? Um, so as you say, in terms of time, you've only got maybe up to, even if you refuel right beforehand, up to maybe two hours to keep going on those glycogen stores. Um, then the body starts to think, it will probably naturally slow down, um, move to more of a moderate intensity, but it will then sort of go into fat metabolization. Um, it will also maybe use adrenaline um, to keep going. Um, and as I say, training and doing that and sort of encouraging the body to understand how to sort of do that as best as possible um, without the body thinking, oh no, I need to completely stop because I'm fatigued and I can't keep going um, and feeling pain in that as well uh, yeah. is, is, is kind of a good way to try and train. Um, but that being said, one thing we touched on earlier as well you do need to look after yourself if you do not train too much to that degree it's important to include it so that the body sort of understands how to switch if it needs to um, but in terms of becoming ill you're more susceptible to it if you train that way a lot yeah um, so making sure that you are fueled and, and nourished and kind of able to sort of so in, in a sense there's a differentiation between there's there's a we can utilize training in a state where we might be slightly depleted mm -hmm. to try and get the body to be used to being in that state at yeah. certain points but if we were to do that continuously every single training session definitely, the definitely. challenge with that is the, the effect that that has on physiologically on the body because we're just driving adrenaline driving much higher levels of cortisol during that training mm -hmm. and if we were actually fueling with 
the fuel sources that essentially the body is utilizing to make energy at that point. Is yeah, that what absolutely. Saying? It's just yeah. putting less of a strain on the body. Um, also, yeah. I mean, we were speaking about endurance athletes that they are more susceptible um, to getting infections when training. Um, so yeah, continually doing too much training without the fuel is not good, but it's nice to just include it when you can. Yeah. Um, again, it's just, as we said, a backup plan. Um, there are so many nutritional sort of strategies, not so many yet. <laughs> there are nutritional strategies out there that are designed to get people through events. However, so many people will understand that on event day, it can all go wrong. And so sh training your body to know how to adjust um, and also having uh, other things ready should anything go wrong yeah yeah on the day it's interesting so i did a cycling event um or a couple of cycling events last year and like used one fueling strategy for it and it worked perfectly well and the next time i did it it was using a very similar fueling strategy but then started to feel like i was getting cramps in my stomach yeah so knew instantly then that actually i can't just keep whacking the gels in because that's only going to get worse mm -hmm. and pull away from the performance even more so i knew that i had to switch and go okay I need to actually work through this, but without actually being able to top up with the gels all the way through and exactly, maybe find a yeah. different carbohydrate source that's going to be uh, tolerated by me yeah. a little bit better instead. So that's what I did. I kind of switched away from the gels and started bringing in a, a way for the digestion to calm down a little bit and then just use a different type of carbohydrate, which was actually tolerated better, funny enough, like less sugary. Yeah. And I went more complex with it, yeah. kind of so more food based and actually felt much, much better um, doing what I was doing there. So I guess it's training people to have that ability to go, this is a strategy that you can use, let's see yeah. how you roll with it. But Ready also to respond in the moment, I guess, because you're only gonna figure that out on the day. I do think as well in terms of what you spoke about, like feeling stomach cramps, um, there are guidelines, I think it's between 30 and 60 grams sort of per hour based on that the gut can digest one gram of carbohydrate per hour approximately. Um, that doesn't always work for everybody. One gram of carbohydrate per minute. Per minute. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go now. Yeah. Got it all wrong. Um, so, if with different people, not everyone is going to be able to tolerate as much. Yeah. Um, some people can um, feel that they run better almost with, with nothing through sort of two hours and then kind of have to refuel, but with minimal amounts. Um, and that can be different for cyclists, different for runners. So always having that time period during your training to sort of allow for sort of a trial and error and kind of testing yeah. tolerance phase. Um, and that way you'll then know coming up to the event and in the full lead up to the event, you know what works for you. Yeah. Um, but also, as you say, making sure you've got a few sort of things in mind should anything not go exactly as planned on the yeah. day. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. So I think, yeah. Yeah, so I think I've always said to any athletes that I've worked with is, is like, you never want to be guessing anything on the day. Mm -hmm. Like you want to be absolutely 100% comfortable with, you know, similar would be from a strength conditioning point of view, what's your warm up? What things are you doing before on the day? So you're going through this very standardized process. You're not going to try anything new with your warm up that you haven't mm -hmm. done ever before. And nutrition has to be kind of almost exactly the same way but then also to to the same degree especially with your endurance athletes is what happens if nerves are higher that day how's that going to affect the digestive system mm -hmm. you know what happens if the weather's warmer that day how's that going to affect you know how many salts we're excreting that sort of thing so there has to be a level of flexibility in yeah. the protocols that are set up but it's really using that training time to um in a sense, use the guidelines that are available, go on a trial and error basis to see what seems to work well for that individual, and then have maybe a couple of little backup plans as yeah. they go into an event so they feel really comfortable that they think they've got the protocol that's gonna work for them. But if in this event, this happens or that happens, they've also got backup strategies to assist Exactly, that. sort of just in case, why don't we try this or why don't we try that along the road just to make sure they're, they're ready for anything because yeah. Yeah, you never know what the day is going to throw at you. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Okay, cool. So thanks, Jen, for that. So I think if you, especially if you're an endurance athlete, uh, you probably agree with this, is that they're probably the people that need the most support from an intra-training and intra-event perspective from Absolutely. a fueling strategy point of view. Mm. 
Um, I think if that's something that interests you, you're into your endurance training, you may be looking for someone to give you some professional guidance, then be sure to reach out and we can set up consultations and you can work with Jane um, to be able to individualize your approach, which I think is the most important thing when it comes to um, sports nutrition. So thanks for listening and we'll speak again.